Welcome to the Battle of Fort Washington, the final battle in the Battle for New York, 1776. If you're not familiar with what's been happening in New York in 1776 with the battle, you can check out my YouTube playlist, The Battle for New York, where I've been covering everything that's been going on from the spring of 1776 and the arrivals of the armies until now, November 16th, 1776, and the Battle of Fort Washington, the final engagement in the Battle for New York. And sadly, it also marks the fall of the island of Manhattan or the fall of the city of New York. Um, now, just to recap a little bit, the goal in 1776 for a British General William Howe is to take the island of Manhattan, possess it, and use it as an operating base to then stop the rebellion in the rest of the colonies. In addition, if he can draw in Washington's army and defeat it here, that's a plus, and he wants to do that as well. General Washington's mission is to prevent that from happening. Now, if you've been watching the other videos, you know that the battle began in Brooklyn in August, moved to Manhattan, and has been making its way up to the northern end of the island, where we find ourselves now in Washington Heights. Washington has, you know, has been pretty much retreating up here to the northern end of the island, so it really hasn't been working out well for him. And it does look like the British will achieve at least one of their goals, possession of the island, but perhaps they won't get that second goal, defeating Washington's army. So let's find out what happens at Fort Washington. So you may know from my other videos that at this point, most of Washington's army has already left Manhattan Island. Washington himself had already retreated to White Plains and up to Peekskill. And there's only a small number of men, about 3,000 here at the northern tip of Manhattan Island. Now, if we look at Manhattan Island on a map, we can see it gets really skinny up here, like a little peninsula. And on the west, we have uh, Hudson's River, or they also called it the North River. And to the north and the east, we have the Harlem River, which connects up with the Long Island Sound. So surrounded by water on three sides. And as you already know from my videos, the British have naval superiority. Washington has no navy. The British have the greatest navy in the world. So obviously, they're going to take advantage of these waterways during the battle. Now, Fort Washington up here in Washington Heights, or as this picture shows, Fort Tryon Park is on the most highest part of Manhattan Island. It sits atop a stone outcropping that goes straight down to the Hudson River. So it's like a sheer cliff going down. Early in 1776, when Washington surveyed this area, when he came through, they decided that this would be a really good place for a fort in case they needed to hold this position. It's a Pentagon five-sided fort um, with gun turrets around it. At this point, there are about 300 men here at Fort Washington, commanded by Colonel Robert McGaw. And they are the last ones remaining on the island, right? England has all of the rest of the island to the south of them. Also engaging in this battle, of course, the highest ranking commanders for the British, we have General William Howe. For the Americans, we have General George Washington. Also helping out General Howe are going to be the Hessians under the command of General Wilhelm Niphausen, which will be the supreme ranking Hessian commander here for the duration of the Revolutionary War. Subordinate to Niphausen is going to be Colonel John Rawl. And uh, we're going to be talking about John Rawl when we get to the crossing of the Delaware Christmas 1776, because there's an interesting story concerning him as he was commander of that um, Hessian encampment. Uh, that the British, that the Americans attacked that night. So we'll be talking more about Colonel Raw in December. But for now, on the American side, in addition to McGaw, is General Nathaniel Green. Now, Nathaniel Green and Israel Putnam and a number of other men are straight across the Hudson over in New Jersey in Fort Lee. McGaw is still holding the high point here at Fort Washington. General Washington and about 2,000 men have moved down to Fort Lee in the hopes that they can cross over and reinforce McGaw if necessary. But, of course, the British, with their naval superiority, have already begun moving their warships up the Hudson River, around and into the Harlem River. So that crossing is not going to be too likely. Now, the day before, November 15th, General Howe sent a request to McGaw to surrender the fort. And he says, you know, it's time to surrender. If you don't surrender, you're all going to die there. And McGaw sends back a message saying that patriots are prepared to fight to the very last extremity. 
Now, Washington also would like Magaw to try to hold on to the spot. Even after the attack begins on November 16th, Washington sends a messenger over asking Magaw to try to hold out till nightfall. Washington is hoping that he can pull off a retreat um, as they did August 29th when they moved from Brooklyn to Manhattan under cover of darkness across the East River. So it seems like Washington maybe has something like that in mind, that if they can hold out till dark, they can descend down to the uh, shoreline there and cross over to Fort Lee. But this battle is going to be so overwhelmed that there's no hope for Magaw to hold out till nightfall. Um, the British are going to attack on three sides, right? They're going to come in on three sides and eventually all four sides. Magaw has moved his men out of the fort, has kind of advanced lines around the fort, but when the artillery and and when the artillery, rifle, and musket fire starts, um, it's evident that they can't hold these positions. Now, in the line of artillery up here at Fort Washington is a local man named John Corman who's manning a cannon, and he was hit and killed by Hessian return fire. At that time, his wife Margaret Corbin took his place at that artillery piece and continued to fire it until she herself was injured and had to stop. Um, she was not killed, she survived the battle, and she's the first known woman combatant of the Revolutionary War, Margaret Corbin. And there are a number of markers up here in Washington Heights uh, celebrating her heroism. Um, so the fighting continues uh, throughout the day and uh, Johann Rahl sends a message to Magaw again, asking for surrender. And I'm not even sure if Washington's messenger asking Magaw to fight until nightfall even made it before Magaw surrendered. I'm not sure. I would have to look that up, but I don't think he made it that Magaw even got that message. If he did get the message, he's not going to be able to say yes. It's just it's just too overwhelming. Um, they're, they're outnumbered two to one as well as naval power and also artillery fire. So, you know, there's no way they're going to hold this fort. Magaw tries to delay the surrender a little bit. I think Rawl gave him two hours. Magaw tried to extend that and to try to get better terms for his men, but the final terms were that they could only keep their personal belongings. By four o'clock, the American flag was lowered and the British flag raised in its place. And of course, um, Generals Washington and Green watched that happen from the other side of the Hudson River over in Fort Lee. So now they have finally seen Manhattan fall to the English. When the Hessians soldiers took the fort, they severely beat the American soldiers and stole everything they could find. The beatings were so intense that the Hessian officers had to come in and stop their men from beating the Americans to death. And Americans were quite shocked at this. This wasn't something they expected to happen to them. Now in the surrender, I have to look at the numbers. Let me find them because I always forget what these numbers are. The British got 34 cannons, two howitzers, an unknown number of tents, blankets, tools, and ammo. In the battle, the British lost 84 and had 374 wounded. The Americans lost 59 and had 96 wounded. So it sounds like the Americans kind of fared better in this battle until you look at prisoners of war. The British took 2,837 men, prisoners of war. They were brought down into New York City where they were held in the jails there. And 18 months later, when they were freed, only 800 of them had survived those jails. Some of you might know those jails are really notorious. The Jersey prison ship, the Sugar House, um, the Provost Jail and uh, the Bridewell Jail. And I am going to be making a separate video just about the jails that were used during the British occupation because the story is pretty horrific. Obviously, if 2,000 of those men couldn't survive even 18 months to be released. So that is the story of Fort Washington. It's just a few hours. It's the last battle in the overall battle for New York, and it marks the fall of Manhattan Island to the British. Well, now the British will hold the island for seven years, almost seven years to the day. And on November 25th, 1783, General Washington will pass through here again, where he will reclaim the fort along with our governor, George Clinton, for New York and America. Washington at that time was on his way down into the town for his triumphal march and the celebration of Evacuation Day, the day the British left the island of Manhattan. And I have a couple of videos here about Evacuation Day. The best one is this one that I'm highlighting here now on YouTube for you. 
took place two years ago. A whole bunch of us got dressed up for evacuation day and played characters you may have run into on that day who told their story of who they were and what they were doing. So it's a fun video to watch. Now, speaking of historical uh, reenactors, last weekend, I came up here to Fort Tryon uh, where I had the pleasure of participating in a reenactment myself with many of my friends and colleagues, a little encampment of what it was like to be here in 1776. And as you can see from the pictures, there was a blacksmithing demonstration, a cooking demonstration, all sorts of people were here. Uh, my friend, uh, um, Mr. Tonkin, who plays uh, one of Glover's regiments, Marblehead Mariner. My other friends who play soldiers were here. Uh, my friends who play Mr. and Mrs. Washington were here. And I portrayed my 18th century character, Mrs. Q, a New York City merchant, and spoke about what it was like to be a wealthy lady in New York City at that time. It's always great to be able to go out and bring the time period directly to the public and talk to people. So if you have an opportunity to attend anything like that, please do. Also, I'll close here with some video of some musket fire that was done that day. You know, please like and share my video. Um, subscribe to my channel so you can get some of these future videos that are coming out, the prison ships or the prisons, I should say. I'm also working on a video about historic Tappan or Tappan, New York, and a historic and controversial event that occurred there in 1780, which most people have forgotten about, that's coming out. I'm working on a tour of New York and what it looks like in 1660, and also a video tour of New York showing you where the great ladies of early New York lived and talking about what they did. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those and other videos I'll be working on. And of course, if you are in New York or are coming to New York, please take a tour with me. PatriotToursNYC.com. I am always happy to meet all of you who found me on video. So in closing, here's some musket fire at the recent reenactment of the Battle of Fort Washington. My regiment, make ready.